Hey, everybody. It's Crystal Ann Compton, and thank you for joining me here in this video. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. This video is a long time coming, well, almost two months coming. I mentioned, I think in December, beginning of January, that I had that some things had been going on um, and that I would talk to you about it openly at another time. And one of the reasons I actually haven't been on YouTube the last couple of weeks is because I know that I, I have to talk about this and I don't really want to because it's hard. <clears throat> and so trigger warning, this is an emotional video. We're going to be talking about death and dying and things like that. Um, so two days before Christmas, 2020, my father-in-law shot himself in the head. My father-in-law was a soldier in Vietnam. He had PTSD and he had some issues. By the time I met my father-in-law, my, my observation was that he was largely kind of checked out, almost living life um, automatically, you know, in a default setting, if you will. Very nice though. I mean, like just so kind and Texas gentleman. Like if I was stranded on the road five states away, I know he would get up in the middle of the night and he would drive and he'd come get me or he'd do whatever he could do for other people. He was a, he was a good man, but I never really had a deep conversation with him. I never really knew him the way that he was once. But that was all right, you know, just you you take people for who they are and and that's what it is. He was a good man, but I mean, he was troubled as well. Um, and I think that he wasn't dealing with a lot of things. Like when you're living life in a default setting, like just doing, going through the motions, like you're not dealing with things. You're not on a path of healing. You're just on a path of staying and being stuck. And I don't want to be, a, I'm not judging him. It's just what my observation was. And so this was a huge shock, of course. And it was so disturbing. We got the call that he had died in the middle of the night, Tuesday uh, morning. And so we went right over there. And as soon as we walked in the door, there were the sheriffs and everybody was there. His mother said he shot himself and she had just found that out. She was in bed with him when he did it. He did it while she was in bed next to him. Um, And she didn't, she was deeply asleep and it had been a long day and she didn't hear or process the gunshot. So she didn't know. And she, there were other people in the house visiting for the holidays. And so um, Jeremy's uncle came in and took his pulse and didn't see like all the blood. Like they didn't know until that moment that what had happened was that he had shot himself. And I just remember my husband standing in the middle of the room, like hearing that, like what? My dad did what? He was 72 years old. And, you know, as the weeks have been ticking by in retrospect, the family can identify a few things that had happened that were possible indications of his ideation. Like, um, I think it was October or November, he gave my husband his beloved Ford truck. Like he'd had this truck since the 90s and loved it. And Jeremy's like, when am I going to get that truck? He's like, you're never getting this truck. You know what I mean? When I'm dead kind of a thing. Um but two, two months before he passed, he actually just gave the truck to Jeremy. And he's like, no, I'm going to buy a new truck next year so you can have it. And during Thanksgiving, when his sister, Jeremy's sister visited and her family, like he just gave a lot of his things and said, no, I'll take it. You, you guys use it. He divested himself of things. But it wasn't enough for people to actually wonder if there was something more going on. Now, one thing they don't tell you about this kind of thing is that somebody has to clean it up. Somebody had to clean ha had to clean that up. And that somebody wasn't the police or a service of the police or the government. That would have cost around $10,000, which the family didn't have. So the person who cleaned that up was my husband. And I won't get, go into gory detail, but it was gory and it was everywhere. <sighs> I 
And that's really fucked up. Can you imagine? But my husband did it. My husband's a big guy, right? Some of you have seen him. He's 6'3", strong. But like, how, who can be strong enough for that? But he did it. And then he disassembled the bed and he threw it out and he took some, he put some in the, in the trailer. He brought it to our property. He burned it in barrels. He's been back to the house, just cleaning things up. And, but of course there's an incredible mental blow to him and his family. And so the last couple months has been a lot of just managing that and finding the pathway through for the people left behind. You know, and I don't even consider myself to be one of those people necessarily. Like I'm, I'm a daughter-in-law, I'm an in-law, but I mean, of course I still loved him, but I'm much more concerned about my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law and my, my husband and everything that they're feeling. And it's just been such, a, it's been so fucked up. And on top of that, <laughs> I have someone in my life right now who struggles with suicidal thoughts and depression and it's incredibly real to me <laughs> of course it's always been real to me but it's incredibly acute at this time like about us, about you, about me, about the people that are left behind, about the people that are trying to help. Like that is such a helpless place to be sometimes because I don't know what to do. You know, and you think all the logical things like, well, let's get the doctor on board. Let's get the nutrition on board. Let's do all the things, you know, let me, how could I mom this? Let me mom this to death for everybody. Like, but that's just me trying to cope with my own stuff and trying to just figure it out by solving something. You don't, you can't solve it. You just can't solve it. And I've just been, I've on the down low in the background, I've been swinging, just oscillating between happy face. Let me do this. Sure. And can I just stay in bed all day though? When does this stop? Like how come life is so hard so often? Why? And I'm just like the in-law, <laughs> but I mean, and then ugh, it's just been so much. And one thing I have going for me is my knowledge of and my relationship with spirit, with God. And my experience of the other side and what that means and the things that I can perceive. And I also know how energy is transferable, like energy is transferable. And there's this, there's a reason that it be, it, suicide can kind of be like a virus. It can be kind of like a virus. When somebody does it, it affects everybody who's witnessed it. And then they have an easier time justifying it in their life. And I was actually watching David Politis uh, from Missing 411, he has a video, he's got a YouTube, I think it's called Can-Am, C-A-N-A-M. Look up David Politis, Can-Am, and you'll find him. But his son just committed suicide like three weeks ago. And David was a cop, and he was talking to the coroner, and the coroner actually told him like that she had never seen anything like what's going on right now, what, what's going on in 2020. She said that there were more suicides in L.A. County in the last six months than in the 30 years preceding. Like, let that sink in. There's more suicides in the last six months in that particular county than in the 30 years preceding. But we don't hear about this on the news. Nobody's talking about this, about the mental health of humans going through lockdowns, COVID, riots, and all of the things that are happening in this world, and the general despondency that everybody's feeling. There's no, there's, there's no mask that we can wear for that. There's no vaccine for that. And we're not talking about it. And it's happening more and more and more. This energy is transferable. Just last night, 
I was flossing my teeth. And if you don't know, I have kind of crazy teeth. I got these little fangs right here. And my teeth are all tight. They're very tight together. And so sometimes flossing is um is is a treat. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic because I'm, I floss every day, like two or three times a day, whatever. But I'm just saying there's this one section that's so tight that my floss sometimes breaks off. And every now and again, I'll get a piece of floss stuck in my tooth. Stay with me. For whatever reason, this is the most rage-inducing, infuriating thing besides tech stuff going, going wrong. Like if I can't get that thing out of my teeth, I start to just feel... I like start to feel out of control. And so I'm just, it's like 10, 10 o'clock last night. I'm flossing my teeth. This big piece of floss gets stuck in my tooth. I cannot get it out. I'm in there for an hour trying to get it out. And I'm just like in this state about it. But it's really not about the dental floss. It's about lack of control over my own life. But I came out of the bathroom into my bedroom. My husband was lying there and I said some stupid things like, oh my God, I just can't anymore. I can't get this out of my teeth. And I just, what, what's the point? Like I was talking like that. And my husband said, what are you saying? And I'm just like, I'm just so frustrated with everything. Like, why is it so hard all the time? I wish it wasn't so hard all the time. And what was coming out of my mouth was reflective of the things that I have experienced and I'm experiencing around me. And I'm, I'm, me, Crystal Ann Compton, parroting the energy that I am trying to deal with. And I, I I actually left the room and I had to look at myself and like, whoa, what's going on here? Like, you got to be very present right now for such a time as this. You've got to be self-aware what's happening to you and the energy that you're taking on. And are you processing it? Like, how are you off-gassing that? Are you meditating enough? Are you praying enough? It hurts sometimes to pray. It hurts sometimes to pray because you want it to scab over, right? You want it to just heal and to, it hurts sometimes to go to therapy. It hurts sometimes to pray. And sometimes when you pray, you think about, well, who, who will my brain do anyway? Hmm? Where were you that night? Are you showing up in the life of this person I love who's, who's suicidal? Where are you? This world can seem so crazy. Sometimes it hurts to pray, but, but I pray anyway. And with this person in my life who's having a hard time, I just, it's hard because I love them so much. It's, it's so hard to just kind of cut through the fear and pray. And one thing I like to do is visualize them as healed. That's the key to healing, is visualizing them as, as whole and happy and at their highest state in life. Whew, that's hard when you're so worried and you're so taken with their state now. It's hard. but I do it anyway. And one thing I know about God is that God is faithful. I mean, we don't understand everything, right? Clearly. But God is faithful in his presence or her presence. I don't believe in an anthropomorphic God. I just I call God, source God. God's there. In the midst of the storm, God is there. But we signed up for the storm. I signed up for this. <laughs> on a soul level, I mean, I knew all about this coming into it. I knew what I was going to get. But on a soul level, we wanted it. We were like, yeah, give it to me. Because on a soul level, I can integrate this and I can learn from this and I can persevere through this and I can shift and fine tune through this and, and through all of it. I can align back to source energy, love, my higher self, like that's what we came here to do, knowing how difficult it was. But like sometimes I think to myself, really? <laughs> really? I signed up for this? I wanted this. Okay. <clears throat> 
there are sometimes I wish I would have chosen a different dimension or something like the fifth dimension. Wouldn't it have been great to just spend some time in heaven <laughs> instead of coming back to this earth plane? Um, but we're here. We're here. So I haven't been feeling great, guys. I'm worried about my husband. He's doing well, but I love him. He had to clean it up. Are you kidding me? I worry about my beloved. I worry about people. And I, in my moments of super clarity, I worry about myself. Not that I would ever do anything I wouldn't, but I just worry about taking care. How do I take care of myself? How do I love myself through this when it feels like there's only so many resources to go around? There's only so many resources to go around. Like I don't think I I don't think I've got anything left in the tank. You know? So that's where I've been. You know, I've I've talked to you guys a lot about the seasonality of spirituality. Like sometimes it's spring and there's flowers everywhere. And here comes the beautiful leaks, leaves on the majestic oak tree. And the breeze is so beautiful and the sun feels so good and I'm planting my garden. But sometimes it's winter. Sometimes it's winter so hard that the grid goes down in Texas. I was here for that. Didn't have power. The beautiful cherry on top of my shit Sunday. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be negative. I'm just being real with you. Like, okay, I guess I can also be a survivalist. <laughs> right on. Thankfully, I had a husband who knew how to do all the things. Um, but sometimes it's winter. Sometimes it's monsoon season. Sometimes you've got three hurricanes coming in in a row. Florida, <laughs> Texas, Louisiana, like three of them in a row. And that's just what it is. And it's not about producing flowers in the midst of the hurricane. It's about surviving the hurricane in the best way that you can. And that's what I've been doing. So I thought I would share that with you to be completely honest about what I am doing with, with my thoughts in my life. Like Wednesday, I was just in bed all day, all day. All day, I got a call from my loved one, and it was bad day for them. And I was just all day. I took that. I I took that situation, and I did the best that I could. And then I was just like, I'm going to bed, man. Just don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to be in bed. It is very important for me to take care of myself. What does that look like? Oh, God. All the things that I need to do to take care of myself feel really hard, like eating right. <clears throat> drinking enough water here. Let me get my water. Good Lord. A gallon a day, Crystal. Drinking enough water. Self-talk. Noticing. Oh, I'm spiraling in my thoughts here a little bit. Or I'm, I'm focusing over much and on something I cannot solve. I'm getting sucked into the vortex of doom. Noticing, correcting, reestablishing that self-care. Um, getting enough rest, not not putting, not stretching myself too thin. Well, I don't have that problem right now because I'm not doing much, honestly. I'm present in the intuitive intensive. That's like the joy that I've got in my life right now. It's just being with the students and being in the content. It's so restorative for me. But like, other than that, like I'm not doing a lot. And I feel guilty about that. I feel like oh, I should be on YouTube four times a week. I should be doing live streams. I should be doing, I should be cranking out my book. I should be doing, 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 producing, producing, producing. Like I just, sometimes I can't get off the couch. <laughs> um, am I clinically depressed? No. Have I gone through something? Yeah. Am I processing it? I am. Am I mindful and aware of taking care of myself? I am. And even though it's hard, I'm doing the things. I'm doing the things. I'm getting the nutrition. I'm getting the rest. Sometimes too much rest. And I'm trying to be gentle on myself. I There's no lesson on this one, guys. I'm really in a big lesson right now. 
And so I just want to say thank you, God, and me. Thank you, God, and me. Thank you, God, and me, because the kingdom of heaven is within and within me is everything I need to weather this season and this storm. And even though I don't always feel it, and even though sometimes it's really despondent and it feels like it's just too much Texas grid, <laughs> this is just too freaking much. Thank you, God, and me. There is this et eternal wellspring that I can return to within myself. I just have to do it. You just have to do it. You just have to do it. We just have to do it. Even if it's hard, praying is hard. We got to pray anyway. Even if it's hard, meditation can be hard because all of the thoughts, all of the thoughts and the images. Meditation is hard. I have to do it anyway. A gallon of water, hard. I do it anyway. Step by step, we move forward through the season. And soon I'll be back doing my thing. <laughs> And it's okay that I'm not right now. And it's okay if I say, hey, guys, can you pray for me and my family? I need you. I don't talk to a lot of people. I don't talk to a lot of people. I really can't talk to my husband right now. I don't want to put that on him. Will you pray for me? Thank you. I feel like I shouldn't post this. But um, every time I feel that way, it's always good that I do. God says, do it. And you got to break the seal. You got to post something, Crystal. You got to tell the truth about stuff, Crystal. That's one thing I've always tried to do. I've tried to be in integrity about that and tell you guys this is where I'm at. And this is how I messed up. And this is all the crap that I've done that I'm trying to fix. Like I try to be very honest, real with you. This is where I'm at. I'm doing the things. I'm doing the things. I'm working the program, if you will. And it's getting me through. But this is why I've been quiet a little bit reserved and um, hopefully soon I'll be back with the jump off. <laughs> I'll be back in full effect. Until then, please know that I have got nothing but love for you. Bye guys.